It really feels like this all-star break has lasted a month. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Join today, and you'll get 200 bucks in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Learn more at FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get signed up. We are going to be putting a bow on this week. It's been a very long week for not only Flames fans, but I think a lot of the hockey community. And we're going to talk about the latest, obviously, uh, Calgary's team statement that we didn't really get to go over because a trade happened. And the latest, uh, the next step in proceedings. And of course, uh, Chris Tanev is rumored to be on the move within the next 48 hours. So we have to talk about that. And because this has been such a long week, we are not going to be focusing on the losers of the week, but the winners. Make sure you're subscribed to Lockdown Flames wherever you get your podcasts, and of course on YouTube as well. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. This has been a very long week. There is no denying that. Not only did we not have hockey, Calgary Flames hockey, this week, there was a lot of movement. Monday, in Monday's episode, I said, oh, like, there's going to be, like, an unofficial roster freeze during this time because people are on vacation, GMs really aren't, aren't in the office working. They're all, they're always on call, let's be honest. But I said, you know, I, I don't expect much to happen. I am very sorry, everyone. I was very wrong. But... Obviously, Elias and Holm got traded to the Canucks, and other that quickly became the biggest story coming out of Calgary. 18 hours or so after the Flames released a statement regarding Dylan Dubé's um, charge. As we know, he was arrested and charged on, I believe it was Monday, officially. And the team released a statement after they were receiving a lot of deserved backlash because how are you going to grant someone a leave of absence for mental health and then they turn around and get arrested for a crime that happened in 2018 like the math wasn't entirely mathing there for fans and i not even just flames fans what literally everyone in the hockey community had something to say about this so like five hours after the official announcement of Dubé and the other players arrests the flames released a statement we have now become aware of the charge of sexual assault that has been laid against Dylan Dubé we take this matter very seriously because the matter is now pending legal proceedings we will have no further comment at this time we had no knowledge of the pending charges at the time Dylan's request for a leave of absence was granted okay i would like to believe that that is the case. But that also means there are so many laps of lapse in communication, judgment, accountability. No one thought to call Dubé's lawyer. No one thought to maybe call, um, you know, have the Flames legal department reach out to the Ontario police and be like, hey, What's going on here? Like, there were, while this was an ongoing investigation, something tells me that something could have been talked about. And I, again, am not a lawyer. I'm not a legal expert. I have watched a lot of Law and Order, but that does not make me anything other than a consumer of good television. It is so naive to think that they had no idea. And I have such a hard time wrapping my head around. Like, I don't think that they maybe fully knew, but I don't think that they were completely in the dark because 
the timing is just so strange. And of course, you know what? Uh, liars are going to lie. Agents and lawyers are going to manipulate and make things look great for their client. And deflection is one of the most used tools in publicity stunts. Isn't, that sounds like Dylan Dubé taking a leave of absence for mental health and then turning around being charged with sexual assault. That's very much a publicity stunt in terms of trying to spin it and save yourself. But didn't didn't, didn't work. I completely understand why you want to believe the flames. I do not want to believe that the same organization that has treated Oliver Shillington with the utmost respect in the last two years of his mental health leave did this. I don't want to believe that they polluted or, you know, turned a blind eye and said, okay, this will do it. And then the same day that Shillington comes back, he's granted that leave of absence. And it just, it feels so weird. It's so gross. Like, there's no other way to put it besides gross. And was I had completely forgot about uh, the Flames prospect, the uh, Rooney Toppy. I believe is his name, uh, that was released back in October after being investigated for rape. Um, he was being investigated prior to the draft, which means no one was asking the right questions. No one had the forethought to, like, do a little deeper digging. I, I, they knew. They, they had to have known. And they still went ahead with it. What happened to the NHL report that they are supposedly conducting? No one was in communication with the teams, the police, and these investigate. Like, there are so many wires to be crossed here. I, I think it is a giant gray area. Simply because nothing is really ever black, just black and white, especially in this sport. And we have learned that a lot in the last, I mean, really, I would say three years. Um, it's been a lot. And you don't want to believe that things are as evil and gutless. You think back to how the Chicago Blackhawks handled the... Uh, Kyle Beach assault and you know it was pushed down pushed down as a cover-up and I'm not saying that's what the flames are doing here but like it wouldn't be the first time that something gets overlooked and that needs to change but coming up next we are going to take a hard left turn into talking about trade rumblings because as of the time I'm recording this, Chris Tanev is supposedly being traded uh, relatively soon and that is according to Canucks reporters. So we will see what happens there. But before we do that, we are going to take a quick break and I am going to talk to you all about our friends at FanDuel. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is about scoring the best seat on the the best seat on the couch grabbing your favorite football snacks and placing some super bets FanDuel has so many ways for you to end the season with a, a win or two or three now not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58 but FanDuel also has bets for which player will score a touchdown how many points will be scored and so much more New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. And just visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with Fanduel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Mm. 
thank you everyone for tuning in to today's episode of Lockdown Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, we are wrapping up a very long week, and I hope that everyone is going to enjoy the weekend, watch as much of uh, the All-Star Game and content you can absorb. I always love these weekends because there's so much happening, and it's one of the few times that we get to see the players kind of be themselves, be as close as... (laughs) as close to themselves as media training really allows. And I think that's fun because you do get moments like we got uh, Thursday evening where Michael Buble admits that he uh, had a little snack and was not completely there, allegedly. But what also is not completely there is the clarity And Chris Tanev, is he trading? Is he getting traded? Is he staying? There is absolutely no clarity in the Noah Hannafin situation either. There's there's nothing there. And I'm I'm so confused. But that's fine. The other day when I was looking at the trade proposals, there was one that involved Elias Lindholm. That was hysterical. But thankfully, we don't have to worry about that anymore because... He's already on the move. However, I do not think Chris Tanev is going to uh, harbor, is that the word, the right word? The first round draft pick that the Flames want in return. And like Nick said on Thursday's episode, I believe it was Thursday's show, uh, if there was an offer, that would have been done already. Do I think because of the amount of heavy reporting from Canucks be media members that there might be something brewing there? Yeah, probably, but I don't understand why three out of his last four trades would be done with Vancouver. Not only is that a, ri- a rival, but they're in your division. And that, to me, that doesn't make sense. I understand that the Flames aren't super competitive and, like, but why why are you making such a a local, close opponent uh, better? (laughs) Why are you sending them your good players? I really kind of expected Niels uh, Hoaglander to be included in one of the deals if... There was going to be something with the Flames and Canucks simply because that's the name that has been floated around. But now that they have moved Kuzmenko, I don't think that they're going to move Hoglander. I, or Hoglander, sorry. I would love to have him on the team. He is 23 years old. He has a $1.1 million cap hit. So he's young and there's the affordability there too. There's still time, Uh, you know, he's under team control for a bit, and I just don't, I don't see a world where this happens now just because of the return for the Elias and home trade. I'm sure they could get another draft pick for Chris Tanev. I don't know if you're getting another roster player. especially if you're getting that first round draft pick. Again, I do not take any credibility. I like I cannot package trades together accurately. I can laugh at them when they're like outlandishly one-sided, but that's it. I don't have <laughs> the math skill or to uh I guess accurately or as close to accurately uh, assess a player's talent and worth and compatibility, comparability. I don't have that. But I would much rather the Flames either get a top-end prospect, not even just from, like, Vancouver. I'm talking about whatever this deal comes to. But a top-end prospect and a draft pick would be fantastic because – 
the flames really need to work on replenishing what has been uh, depleted sounds a little bit aggressive, but in a little bit bit extreme, but they need to work on building that AHL system back up because a lot of those guys that are there now, Coronado, Pelletier, Jamie Poirier, like those guys, Dustin Wolf, are going to be making the jump to the NHL soon. So it is up to the Flames to properly assess the situation and what is available to get the most for your players and, you know, what can you do for your assets? I think, I hope that there isn't a rush to any of this. I hope that, I don't, like, I don't want the Flames to trade Chris Tanev. I'm going to be entirely honest. I, I really like him and I think that he is, like, one of the few pieces that are holding the Flames together and why they're not, like, hanging in the complete basement with, like, San Jose. But I would be disappointed if they didn't at least get a a top-end prospect or a first-round draft pick. That's just my assessment of things because, again, you got to work on what needs replenishing. (laughs) There's There are some quick fixes to get the Flames uh, through the rest of the season. One absolutely outlandish trade or player that I had heard brought up is, of course, Thomas Hurdle. I do not think that this is something that is going to happen. This is one of those trades and names that gets brought up probably as engagement bait. Or just it's so outlandish that like it, it might actually be true. And I don't understand this. He is 30 years old. With six years left on his deal with an eight million dollar cap hit. We have enough of those contracts. We have our Jonathan Huberto. We have our Nazem Kadri. We have Jacob Markstrom. Granted, Jacob Markstrom is just turned 34 and has like two two seasons after this left, but like why why do we need another old player for long term? Six years, the arena. The new Calgary Flames arena is projected to be done before that contract is up. Does that... And also, $8 million cap it. Flames are projected to have, I think, around $27 million, um, at least at the time of recording this Thursday evening. It, it, mm, I'm not feeling it. I'm going to pass. Not around here, partner. We've, we've been there, done that. Had this been prior to the extension he signed a few years ago? Yeah, I I might take you up on that. I would absolutely take you up on that because you had because you had so many um better players that would complement him and he'd fit in seamlessly. So at this point now, we're done. We have moved on. <laughs> so We are going to take a quick break here and move on to our winners of the week because, like I said at the top of the show, it has been an incredibly long week without any NHL games to watch with the Elias Lindholm trade and, of course, with the updates coming out of the 2018 Team Canada case. So let's take a quick break and we will be right back with some winners of the week. Thank you everyone for tuning into today's episode of Locked on Flames. Make sure you're following me on social media at Jess Belmosto. Winners and losers of the week is something we do on Fridays around here. If you're new, where I typically pick sports related winners and losers but we're not doing losers this week because i think it's safe to say we all know uh who falls into that category and i'd also just really like to focus on some good things so first up is our sweet little quebecian 
Jacob Pelletier, who made his return to the Wranglers after missing all of this season up until now with a shoulder injury that he suffered during a preseason game and needed preseason surgery or (laughs) shoulder surgery uh, to help heal. And I am so proud of him because there was an number one, he it's great to see him back. He brings all of the vibes. He is that guy that is just always bouncing around and like making sure, you know, this friend's taken care of, that friend's taken care of. Oh, you need to laugh. Okay, like I'll make you laugh. Like he all is so uplifting and encouraging. And I also want to congratulate him on his 100th career AHL point. And Matthew Coronado had the assist on that. Someone called them the new uh, Johnny and Monty, and that was like a punch to the gut. So we'll see how this one works. But one thing I think that is super special about Pelletier is his resilience. I think that that is something that should be commended for anyone, but especially for a guy that's quite literally a twig and considered undersized and how he has fought to be here and there was a pretty significant setback because this was projected to be like his year in terms of breaking into the NHL and I read an article that honestly it made me cry I will be completely honest he did an interview with I believe it was Wes Gilbertson or it was Eric Francis and talked about how Chris Snow and his family really helped him and inspired him to not let himself go to that bad place and feel sorry for himself during his recovery. And to me, that that's someone that has a lot of, like, emotional intelligence and can also have, like, They have an ounce of self-awareness, which is always good, too. To look at your own situation, that is a pretty big setback. And, like, I, you could be disappointed in that. And, you know, push through that because you just went to the services of a man with two young children and a wife uh, and someone who you know, worked on drafting you and kind of using his strength and inspiration to push you through. I think that's great. And it takes a lot to continue to fight. So congratulations, Jacob Pelletier. Uh, I cannot wait until he's back with the Flames full time. I think that's going to be so much fun. And my other winners of the week, um, PWHL. The first month of the inaugural season has wrapped up. Minnesota uh, in Montreal are tied uh, for the top two spots in the league. And that's kind of crazy because Minnesota was kind of, was not even kind of, they were ranked pretty low in projections and predictions. I had them sixth simply because of just the way it was assembled. Their roster was assembled. I don't hate it. I think that that's fun. Because it goes to show you that you can absolutely look good on paper and not live up to those expectations. And you might not look good on paper and you exceed expectations. So I think that that's really fun to see. And they are doing all sorts of fun marketing campaigns. They are um, at the NHL All-Star Game right now. Like there's been a lot of crossover there and I think that that's so much fun and it's gaining you know new eyes on women's hockey and with the Toronto and Montreal game coming to the uh, Scotiabank arena in Toronto that's sold out so that's nearly 20,000 people watching women's hockey in one spot that's pretty cool that that is something a lot of people have wanted for this sport for a very long time. So congratulations to everyone involved. And I hope to get down to a game this season for uh, New York or maybe next time I'm in Boston. I will uh, take a trip up to 
one of uh, Boston's games. But that will do it for me, everyone. Hopefully, we make it to Monday uh, with no more breaking news and we can all enjoy ourselves. If not, you know we'll be here for an update for uh, trades. That's really what we're keeping an eye out here for. So keep your Elliot Friedman Twitter notifications on. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked on Flames wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. And stay safe, stay dry, stay hydrated, and stay moisturized.